Good morning, everybody. How are y'all doing this morning? Did y'all come to praise God? Would y'all stand with me this morning? Well, this morning I just wanted to, to just um, speak over you. You know, John 10.10 10 says, says it's the thief that comes, that comes to kill, to steal, and to destroy. But Jesus said, I have come that you might have life and have it, what? Come on, all you scholars, all you Bible scholars, to have what? More abundantly. Praise God. Praise the Lord. You know, I don't know if it's just coincidence, but it is nice to have Pastor Moore as your pastor because it's more abundantly. Amen. Hallelujah. I know that was a, that was a joke, but, but the thief comes. You know, call it what it is. The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy, not the Lord. The Lord has come that we might have life and have it more abundantly. So today I just welcome you to this service as we give God the glory for all the freedom and all the wonderful, abundant life that he's given us, not just as believers, but praise God, we can have it where we live. And we take it and declare it over our nation this day. And for all those who are here today, all those watching by internet and into the lives of our families, we thank you, Lord God, for your freedom. And we just speak freedom and peace to you in the name of Jesus. Come on, everybody, let's say amen. Glory to God. Say, I am free. I am free. Whom the sun sets free, sun sets free. Is, free. is free. Indeed, I'm free. Praise the Lord.
was heavy, but chains break at the weight of your glory. I needed shelter, I was an orphan, but you call me a citizen of heaven. When I was broken, you were my healer, now your love is the air that I'm breathing. I have a future, my eyes are open, cause when you call my the weight of his glory. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, let's just say this morning and declare who we are, who he says we are in this next song. Praise God.
about that song. Yes, yes, yes. I don't know if, if we could just have the spirit of revelation just pour itself down in us on this morning. I'm a child of God. Just meditate on that for a moment. If you are a born again Christian, if you have received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, let me inform you, you are a child of God. And if that is so, and as you mature, you turn just like you do in the natural from being a child to a son of God. Now the word son there means your maturity. You have matured. And when you come into that place of maturity, let me tell you what happens to a kid. 
in a family, a child in a family, a son or a daughter in a family, they have an inheritance. When you're as a child, the inheritance is there, but you really don't get to use it because you really don't know what to do with it. But as you grow up in Jesus and you find who you are in Christ and you know that you can do this and you can do that and you can tell Satan where to go, ho, ho, ho. And you can stand on the word of God and decree and command and demand in the name of Jesus. Not demanding Jesus, but demanding the devil take his leave and his go. Because look at me. Look at me, Satan. Look at me. Who do you see? You see, and everybody yell it out, Jesus! Woo! I am chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. You are for me. I am who you say I am. I am chosen. I am chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me. I am who you say I am. I am who you say I am. Who the sun sets free. Oh, it's free and I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. In my Father's house, there's a place for me. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. a place for me. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. Hallelujah. Oh, give him a praise. Give him a praise. Give him a thanksgiving offering. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. I'll tell you, if all, if you went home just with that today, that you had the depth of being a child of God. Actually, I've been studying a few things about, uh, and, and, well, I'm always studying, but, you know, lately how God takes you from different places to different places at different times. And I've been here before, but I've, but see, when you, when you've been there before, that's fine. But the, when you go there again. Now think about it. When you go there again, something else is going to happen. More of it comes to you. You see, it's all right that you've been there before. But when you go there again, oh, my, oh, my, oh, my, oh, my. Well, guess where I've been again? Ye are of God, little children. You are called, actually, a God with a small G. Now that'll just run half of you out of the church right now. I didn't write it. Go look it up. It says Elohim. The original is Elohim. And Elohim can only mean one thing. Has to do with God. So it's not like, okay, I was my daddy, but I was his child. I had the same heritage, same DNA, same thing. You know, it was big spade and it was little spade. Hallelujah. It's big God and it's little God right down here. Glory to God. Maybe you're angry with me. Maybe you're not. Really, I don't care because that's exactly what the Bible says. And that's exactly what I'm going to do, how I'm going to act, and what's going to happen to me in Jesus' name. Let it happen to you too. Glory. Turn right in and say it's great to be in church.
Thank you, Lord. Well, we welcome everybody here this morning. And most certainly, we welcome those that might be looking in on us and streaming with us today. We're so glad you're here. Uh, we, have, uh, we have a little special, some things going on for you. I hope you're going to enjoy today that's been planned for you to kind of get you in a, in a, in a festive uh, Independence Day, 4th of July, you know, festivity week kind of thing. But if, uh, if you're here for the very first time today, would you just kind of give us a, a little handshake or a wave or something or other and letting us know that you're here and we bless you. God bless you. Yes, give them a warm welcome. Anybody? We have what we call our contact cards going through the uh, auditorium right now. And if you would be so kind as to take one and just fill it out, then you take it to later on to the guest relations day. And, uh, and now, now that's, we got a noisy corner over here for some reason or other. But anyway, <laughs> they're still praising God, I think. Anyway, if you would so uh, be so kind as to take that card to the guest relations desk, they have something for you we'd like to give to you. We thank you for coming. We believe for you to be our honored guest. Everybody just give a nice round of applause and say with me, we believe for you all to be blessed before you leave this place. Amen, amen, amen. All right, uh, an announcements, a few announcements so we can move on. Healing School, Friday, 1030. I just tell everybody, please, if you have time to come to Healing School, go to Healing School. You don't want to wait till the devil tries to do something to you or till sickness or illness tries to come upon you, which, of course, we know is not the will of God. And so we build ourselves up in the word of God to be strong. We are in the world, but we're not of the world. We have many trials and tribulations, but we overcome them all in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. All right. Billy Burke, come expecting miracles. I mean, I wish I could explain to you what goes on on here on Friday nights. And I, I need to tell you, there isn't one Friday night that he comes that, that it isn't different. It's, it's just amazing. And we just let God be God. And then, of course, um, I will tell you that we do have a three-day conference, healing conference, uh, healing, um, I don't, what do you want, miracle service coming in November. And we're putting out the information for those of you who want to tell relatives or tell people who are ill about uh, that they want to come to this meeting and make plans to be here. Some of them are flying in from different South America, the islands. It's, it's really wonderful. Faith Camp, well, they had a good one. And they're going to have another one uh, July the 30th through the August 3rd. And again... We always need helping hands. We always need volunteers. So would you please think about that and be a helping hand. And Children's Church is also looking for uh, willing and skillful. Well, not necessarily skillful. We can get you fixed up and let you tell, tell you what you need to do to be a helping hand over there. And um, so also for the youth camp, though, you must pre-register your children. So please go to the counter and register if they're coming to the second session. Communion service with myself next Sunday, July 8th. All right, we'll be doing that. I love communion services. I hope you do too. And then Bishop Tudor Bismarck. Sunday, July 15th. Be sure to put it out. He will be here at 1030 in the morning and at 7 p.m. at night. And then, of course, because of the holiday season, the... Um, Real Life Young Adults has been moved, and they will be having their next meeting on Tuesday, July 10th at 7.30. So all you young adults, you come together and have a good time in the Lord, all right? That will be July the 10th now. And I think one, one more thing, men's meeting is coming up on the 14th. So men, you must uh, think about that, put that on your calendar. And so right now, you know what we're going to do? We're going to worship the Lord again, which I love to do with our tithes and offerings. And if you will, please, ushers, if you will, serve the people. And uh, I've just been, uh, just been believing God myself, and I know you are. 
I know as I tithe, I would not miss tithing. I tell you, if I didn't have my next meal, I'm sorry, that's just where I am. Because I know, I know that when I tithe, my God is going to open the windows of heaven for me. I know that. I have no problem with that whatsoever. I have seen that. I have literally seen that. I can tell you stories of literally wanting to know exactly where the next meal is going to come from because I'm having a guest. God is going to send me a, a particular man from Alaska who needs to be saved. And I get a phone call that this drug addict is in Alaska and, he, and he, he's about to die. He's bleeding from the nose. He's bleeding from his mouth. He's about to die. But he, he learns about Pastor Stan. Uh, he learned about him because he found a little slip of paper in a drawer in a, in a real estate office. And my husband was in real estate. And he found this. And he found this paper. And he called Stan. And he wanted to know about some, tr uh, some land. But, but, but that's not why he called. God had him call and talk to a man of God. And the man of God on the other end happened to be your, your former pastor. And, and your pastor told him, he said, what, what's going on here? I sent something and talked to him about Jesus. The man caught a plane. He came all the way down to get saved at my house. But I didn't have anything to feed him. We were kind of like, okay, we were just beginning and we were believing God. But guess what? <laughs> Somebody came to my door, woo wee, with a nice big roast of beef. And I took care of this gentleman, and then I took our pennies, and we went out, we got new sheets, and we put on the bed in the back room, and we even painted it because somebody special was coming, and we were going to have the privilege. So I know what it is to have God meet my needs. But I know how he does it, according to his word. Amen. Obey his word, and you'll never be without. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, that just came out of my heart for you this morning. I hope you enjoyed that little story. But it's true. It's not a story. That actually did happen. Are you ready to bless, to put, bring your tithes and your offerings and to bring it before the throne room of God? All right. Father, we lift up our tithes and offerings. And we do bring them. We bring them through our high priest or an apostle. The one that makes confession to you right now. That's telling you that we are down here at Words of Life. And look at them. They are bringing their tithes and offerings. And Father, we're about to receive them. Jesus just told the Father, we're about to receive them. The Father says, okay, bring them on. Hallelujah. So Father, we give them to you in the name of Jesus. And as you receive them, we claim what you actually say. They are blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Empowered to prosper. The minute they leave your hand, they are multiplying. Serve the people, please, ushers. Glory.
And now I would like to present to you children from our children's church, and they are about to be a blessing to you. Glory. forged on the sacrifice of pilgrims, pioneers, and patriots. Men and women who trusted God, who knew creation had much to offer, and who believed in something bigger than themselves. A nation grown strong through the vision of inventors, idealists, and innovators. given humanity wings, even sent them to the moon. We've done the impossible and haven't been afraid to roll up our sleeves and do the hard work. Ask not! What your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. And above all, we thank God for our Christian foundation, the strength of our nation, and the many blessings he has bestowed upon our sweet land of liberty. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. God bless. America. Caroline was only 13 years old when her mother, Mary Pickersgill, was asked to sew a flag that would fly at Fort McHenry in Baltimore, Maryland during the War of 1812. That flag would become one of the most famous flags in American history. 
Before we began working on the flag, we didn't know we'd become famous. We just knew we'd be big and big enough to see our way from sea. My mother cut materials, but when it was time to sew it together, our house was too small to hold it. The stripes were 42 feet long and the stars were two feet across. Presenting Betsy Ross. If you had to make a list of the most important people in American history, George Washington, Washington would top the list. Even though the chopping down cherry tree is most likely a fable, he was known for his honesty. He was also known as a man of prayer. During the Revolutionary War, you would often find him praying alone. As commander in chief and later as our first president, George Washington trusted God. Many battles of the Revolutionary War were won because of miracles. It would also take a miracle for the men of the Constitutional Convention to agree with one another. I knew that this event was in God's hands. It was Benjamin Franklin who reminded us that we needed to pray every day for God's help. He quoted Psalms 127 verse 1. Except the Lord built the house, they in vain that built it. Many men later said making the Constitution was a miracle of God. America was designed to be one nation under God.
Thank you, Lord. Aren't they good? Yeah. Precious. And uh, let me tell you something. This is what this is all about, too. And, uh, you know, I've had in my heart now uh, that we need and we are going to really do something spectacular over there for Children's Church. We, we need to do it. We should do it. Uh, there's no doubt about that. But let me just say something that, you know, just they need to know the truth. And they're not getting the truth where they are anymore. And, and, and so we, we are responsible to bring them into, into the truth. Why are they even, why do we even have America, you know? And we can't lose those principles. And I just wanted a good old American-looking Independence Day kind of thing and let those kids know what it's all about. I mean, you talk to some children, they don't even know there's a 4th of July. They don't even know there's an Independence Day. They, they don't even know any of that. So, and I'm just going to tell you right now. Now, here's, here's what I want to do. I want to get together the rest of the drawings that we have. Um, I want to uh, sit down uh, with the architect, finish them up, which is going to take some money which they always say, <laughs> every time I ask them, they always say that. And, and, then, and then I want to call in the designer that uh, I've wanted to call in for a long, long time. I want him to look the plans over, and I want to sit with the, uh, uh, with, with the uh, teachers and uh, the workers there at Children's Church and talk to them and let them know what our, what our desires are and let them and get some input from them on what they think we need and what, what's good for that. So I'm, I'm just telling you all that that's on the agenda. Uh, I'm asking you, this church, to really pray about it. I'm asking those out there that might even be listening right now, if God speaks to you about about a, a, a love offering, uh, a, a seed to be planted for a children's reconstruction, restoration of a building that needs a new roof and many other things and all the electrical redone. Uh, if God speaks to your heart about that, we believe we receive. That's exactly where we're at. And every one of us are going to look over there. And no matter what we're looking at right now, we're going to thank God for the new building, the restoration, all the new things, all the fun things, all the beautiful things, all the attractive things. And most of all, for the powerful word of God that will go out. Because at this church, we teach them from this high, the word of God and how to use it. Can everybody say amen. amen? Amen. God bless you all. Now, right now, I have asked Pastor Marcus to come and speak a few little things to you about what America really can mean to some people. You know, sometimes we're born here, and we do take so much for granted, but just go travel. Just travel a little bit. And then, and then come home, and you are so happy to be home. Oh, yes. They don't turn the hot water off in the middle of the afternoon when you're going to take a shower. <laughs> they keep the lights on for you to see really, really well all night long if you want them, you know. <laughs> so just think about it. And uh, I, I, he's got some things in his heart because uh, they, they did go through some things to be in this country. And if ever I've seen a man that is thankful to be in this country, it is our Pastor Marcus. So will you welcome him? Good morning. This is the land of abundance, home of the free, land of the brave. Amen? You know, um, this morning, uh, what I'm going to say this morning is this, this is my America. I'm going to give you a little background, like she said, of where I came from, so you can get the picture how, about how grateful I am for everything that God has provided and where I am today because of the grace of God, but because of the grace that's on this country. God shed his grace on this country. Amen? 
um, she'd asked me to express what this nation, America, means to me. Coming from and being born in an oppressive communist country, being exposed to insufficiency, fear, the, uh, the state where you, the freedom, where uh, your fear, where your freedom of movement is regulated, your speech, you're told what the, your government tells you that there is no God. That's the state, that the state is your provider. It's telling you there is no God and we're your provider. This is indoctrination. And I was born into that. Um, your lifestyle, they tell you how to think, what you believe, and if you don't pledge allegiance to walk according to their doctrine, you're subjected, now listen to me, to raids, they'll raid your house, imprisonment, or the firing squad. I'm talking the firing squad. I'm talking killing somebody. Putting them up against the wall, boom, 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 kill them. This is what I was born into. We're always constant, in a constant state of fear, not knowing who you were talking to, if they were even thought for a moment that you, were, that you weren't complying with the methods as being sold out and brainwashed, and brainwashed, if you weren't sold out, brainwashed, someone could literally go and squeal on you and the militia would come and raid your house. I'm, I, it happened to us. My sister, um, unfortunately, she was outspoken um, she had a hearing deficiency, so she spoke a little louder than everybody else, and people would hear her. And she was, she stood up for what she believed, but unfortunately, she was talking to the wrong people. That afternoon, she went to these people's house, and da 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 da, -da and she told them, the next thing I know, the, the militia, literally, the army pulls up in front of our house, they pull out, and they do a raid in my house. I'm five and a half, six years old. I remember them, as I'm speaking to you, I'm seeing them come through the front door, ripping up the mattresses, ripping up, literally cutting the mattresses in half because they think we're hiding something. Just for the sake, just because my sister was outspoken. They came in, they ripped up ashtrays, throw, tore our closets apart, tore everything, pushed furniture over. So they keep you in a constant state of fear. If you don't submit, you give it up. And this is where I was. This is what I was born into. An environment, really, it was a controlled environment. It was prison, socialism and communism. So you see something, so I have the ability to measure the wonders of this wonderful country because I came from something that was so oppressive. And the thing about it was I was born into it. I didn't realize after Pastor Jerry had asked me that I was, you know how you start recognizing or remembering things five and a half, six years old, maybe some of you earlier. But I remember starting to remember about five and a half six years old, and that's when this, all this was taking place. I remember watching my mom um, go to uh, stand in line for hours, wake up before dawn, and go stand in line for hours for rations, food rations. So you see, I'm not coming just from an oppressive communist state. I'm coming from the results and the fruit of that state is insufficiency and lack and fear and torment and constantly in a constant state of you don't know what's going to happen. You have no hope. There is no tomorrow. They are the ones that govern your expectation. And right after, um, oh, man, I remember butter was, um, how can I say, belonged to kings. If you can imagine this for a moment, butter was like a delicacy. And my, there was a lady that stayed with us. She was like a nanny, but not really a nanny, but she lived with us, and she helped take care of me and my sister while my mom went to work. And I remember that her husband worked in a restaurant, and he would creep little pieces of butter out. I'm talking little tiny chunks, and we would spread it like it was. We, we'd have to spread it to, to see how long it would go. But we're talking, we're talking something that you buy or something you throw away. I can tell you right now, beloved, just to give you an example how, how, how desperate it was there. We throw more food away in one day. One, one day, one day, than I saw for a month. Now, that's, I'm, I want to draw you the picture. That's why I'm telling you where I was coming from. I'm not, this is not doom and gloom. This is, I was born into it. I didn't know any different. I was, this was imposed on me. So watching my mom and living in insufficiency, I was still a kid, so I was, you know, frolicking around. But then right after that, boom. The Bay of Pigs invasion. But before that happened, my, um, my grandparents, rest your darling hearts, they were wise enough to see through, through the Castro's lies. Because remember, they came presenting themselves, this is one nation for all. Everybody's the same. Socialism says, you can have what I have. We're all the same. We're on the same plane. 
But they saw right through it. They saw right through it. And they moved out before Castro was able to take full possession. And when they were in America, they were able to send us back, you know, pictures and talk to us about the land of plenty, the land of more than enough, the land where there's justice and liberty for all. That, the things that I was, they were saying to me, and I'm, I'm a, little, a little kid, so the one thing that stuck with me, just literally branded me, I called this the land of the hamburger. <laughs> because when they sent us pictures of food, you don't do that to somebody who's over here on the other side. But they were, they were trying to impart to us what they were experiencing just by moving over. Justice and liberty for all. These were old people. And then what they started, what I started seeing and imagining was I started to see a different picture than what I was imposed on me that I lived under. And I expected, no, I didn't expect anything. All I expected was oppression and fear and insufficiency forever. As far as I could see, as long as I was, as old as I was, that's all I see. But they were smart enough. And right after they left, before Castro completely took over, the Bay of Pink the Bay of Pig invasions happened. And as that was happening, my father was on his way home. Boom. This is when all hell broke loose. As he was coming home, they threw him in prison. Now here's my mom and my sister and I and this one lady that's living at our house, living in this house with no, my, my mom wasn't working at the time. She lost her job. So we're living on barely get along street. When I say that, I'm talking, I'm serious now. We throw away more food in one day. One day, if you went to your garbage can today or tonight, by the time you get home, you'll throw more food away than we actually had for a month because it was rationed according to the people that you had in your house. We're talking little bits of it. Like I said, butter was a delicacy. You didn't see butter. You did not see butter. And hamburgers, Lord, that was, that was the land of Canaan, really, what it was. So when my father got arrested, he got thrown in prison. As this was going on, and, and the, parent, the, the grandparents weren't able to send us anything, weren't able to, the mail was stopped, the Bay of Pigs invasion stopped, so then that's when all really got completely out of control, where they took over completely. There was no, the movement, even the restricted movement was even greater. And what happened was, the beauty about what the parents and my grandparents had done is they left an impression on my mother and myself and my sister that there was more to life than what he, we had been exposed to. Now, my, my mom had knew the difference because she was older. My sister and I were younger. But at the time, when my grandparents had gone, and they, they kept bringing us stuff back, bringing things to us, what happened was, since my father was thrown in jail, then he was exiled to Venezuela. Here's my mom by herself. Then the freedom flight start. And this is, this is the love of a parent. When I'm there, she knows there is no hope. No hope. I don't know. Is, is any, can anybody else in here say, I, I was born in, in Cuba or I was there about that time? Anybody? Woo! Okay. You know what I'm talking about. You know, you were born in Cuba at that time? Whew. Beloved, the, the, what was going on there? The insufficiency, the lack of trust. You couldn't go anywhere. So what I'm talking about, I'm not just talking about uh, an, an, a regiment of a belief, a doctrine that you couldn't do anything, but there was nothing there to feed the people. The medicine, everything was just completely getting wiped out. Here's my father in prison. My mom is there by herself, and all of a sudden, I'm trying to condense this. The freedom flight started, and here's the love of a mother. She goes, you know what? I'm, I know that there's no hope for you here. Mothers, listen for a moment. Could you put your children on a plane and say goodbye to them? And never know if you were going to see him again. That's where it was. I remember my, my mother putting us on the plane. We got a free, you know, here we are. I'm six years old. Just turned six. My sister's a little older than me. I have no idea. I'm going, I'm going to the land of the hamburger. <laughs> I'm going to the land of milk and honey. But here's my mother on the other side willing to sacrifice her children for the sake of letting them see or experience a better life, willing to sacrifice that. Now, that's true love. Does that, does that remind you of anybody? His name is Jesus. Amen. And as that, when that happened, and we were shipped over here, I remember that um, 
I remember that when we got here and I started living with my grandparents, they were old, so they, they were barely getting along. And I remember I used to watch every plane that flew by, and I'd say, my mother's in that one. My mother's in that one. My mother's in that one. But I, what, what was amazing was that I kept the hope alive. I don't even know where I got the hope. But I kept saying, my mother's in that one. My mother's in that one. And little by little, what I started believing was that one day I will see my mother again. And I used to say it. My mother's in that one. My mother's in that one. What ended up happening was when we were over here, this is the, this is the, the, um, the, the mindset of my mother when she had reached the point where she shipped us over. And there was, no, there was nothing else there for her except she was the only one that was there. It was a point where she reached, she said, give me liberty or give me death. She was willing to sacrifice her life. This is a, this is a woman. Uh, she's probably in her upper 30s that was really, did three times. She had jumped off cliffs and swam to boats that were out there waiting. We pay, I remember my, my grandparents sending money and working it out to be able to, to smuggle her over through, through the, to float over. But she was willing. She said, you know what? I'm willing to put my life on the line and die trying to get my liberty than stay in a condition where this is just absolute impoverishment, where I know there's no hope, there's no, I don't even know if there's a tomorrow. She was willing to sacrifice her life and did it more than once because, as you know, there's, there's crooked people in the world. So what, twice, two of the times, she went to this place where they were designated. They waited overnight. They waited overnight, and the boat that was coming didn't come. So what happened was that the money was stolen. Five, six, seven people, five thousand dollars ahead in 1961. That's like a million dollars today. And we did that. She did that twice. And um, one of the times, the last time, there was a man. <laughs> I remember her telling me this. There was a man, and he was the last one there to jump to jump to the boat. He had to swim, but he was scared. So my mom and the other person that was there tied a rope to his leg and pulled him into the water. And pulled them into the boat because if they didn't, if somebody stayed behind and he got caught, they wouldn't make it because they were, you know, I mean, they were sweeping the beach. This is militia. This is a government that's hell bent on keeping you oppressed and keeping you under their hand, under their feet, under their finger. So at, at any time, once daybreak broke and this guy's still on the beach, they would have been able to trace us down and track, track my mother down and get her. But I remember what happened was... Um, I was, I was at home, and this lady came to my, to, my, uh, to my grandmother's house, and she said, I just came from immigrations, from the, from the post office. It was, um, um, it was in Key West. It was aligned with immigration. It was in the same building. She said, I just came from immigration, and I could swear to you I saw a woman there that looks just like her sister. Like my sister looked very much like my mother. She says, I swear the woman's there. She goes, don't tell the children anything. She went there, and sure enough, my mother had made it. It, it was amazing. Um, she made it, and the, and the beauty about it was that when she came over here, think about this for a moment, liberty and justice for all. Stop there for a moment. Do we take that for granted? Yes, we do. Do we take, like Pastor said, that we can pull over and pull a switch and the light is expected to come on? Do we go to the sink and turn on the water and expect water to run? Do we go to a toilet and flush it and know that it's going to be filled again? We take for granted the simplest, simplest thing. People, the food we throw away. The food we throw away. Oh, it got spoiled. Really? I mean, but the, the value system is what I'm t coming to. But what I want to do is I want to bring it to fruition. My mother finally made it. She started working. This is why this country is amazing. This country is amazing. This woman came with nothing but the clothes on her back. She came from nothing to nothing, and God was able to restore her with her children. Eventually, my father was able to get, uh, we were able to get my father back exiled from, to Venezuela. We were able to get him back in the States. And my father and my mother and I were reunited. We had the ability, my, my mother was working two jobs, but she was, she was determined because she knew what she got 
well, she would not take for granted what the liberty that she got to be able to work and be able to provide and be able to put food on the table and know that tomorrow she could do the same thing. And once my father came, we became reunited. He was able, he came with nothing but the clothes on his back and he was able to put up three restaurants. He owned three personal restaurants himself, came with nothing to nothing. So you see, what is this country? This is Canaan land. I'm telling you right now, this is Canaan land. I didn't know it at the time, but I can tell you right now, the land of the hamburger, an impression that was placed in me by my grandmother, sending us pictures, kept the hope alive that there's something better than just what I was exposed to and what was being imposed on me, the, the liberties that were taken from me, all those things. But if we look at this country, we got to realize that this is a city on a hill. This country was ordained by God, given birth by God. The day, this is the day of independence. This is the day that the Lord has made. It's amazing that this country was birthed by God. Can I hear somebody say, thank you, Lord? Thank you, Lord. And we cannot take for granted. Now, you see, you hear a lot of people, and unfortunately, some of the um, um, more affluent um, Athletes who have made a lot of money and they're sitting on, on, you know, on, on security road. They're able to complain about what they have. They're, they're able to, to now I'm not, getting, I'm not trying to get political here. What I'm saying is the honor that this country is due because that flag, that flag right there represents your liberty, yes. your justice, yes. no discrimination. Now, we know it happens, but there is no discrimination. That flag says, give me the weak, give me the poor, give me the downtrodden, give them to me. Come in. And that Statue of Liberty is stating the same thing. Bring them to me. This is a nation that was birthed by God for the purpose of being able to be a light on a hill. There is no other country where it says, in God we trust. We pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Allegiance to the flag. One nation, one nation, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Really, really, I'm telling you, I, I know there's imperfections, but I can tell you right now, there is no other country as rich as this country, spiritually, economically, in every which way. You can complain all you want. You don't have to bow a knee to the flag, but what you're doing is you're saying, you know what, this country, I'm going to stand against this country because something's happening over here. Listen, there's people dying for you to be able to bow a knee and do what you're doing. This liberty didn't come for free. There was a price that was paid. There was a sacrifice made. And the liberties that we have today, we can't take for granted either. Just the fact that you can wake up this morning and you can make a choice of where you want to go to church is the reason. Come on, somebody. The ability to make a decision to worship God is why we came to this nation. This nation was upheld, sustained, brought forth, and birthed by God. One nation under God, indivisible, and with liberty and justice for all. And when Pastor Jerry was talking about, you know what, if, if you're a child, then you have an inheritance. If you've come to America and made America your nation, if you've come over here, you have the same, um, you, you, the blessings that are on this nation belong to you by inheritance because you are an American citizen today. And if you're not, you belong to a citizenship. That's, there's no other greater citizenship than the one, the citizenship in heaven, than the citizenship of this United States of America. Does that not sound like the gospel? Liberty and justice for all. I thank God for this opportunity to bless America, for God to bless America. And just like the psalm said, blessed is the nation. 
Blessed is the nation, and blessed are you because you are a citizen of this nation. You are partaker of the blessing that is in America. Amen. God bless you. Give God glory, and thank you for this opportunity. It does sound like the gospel. Thank you. I had to wear it. What can I tell you? <laughs> Glory be to God. I do want to remind you that we will not have service this Wednesday night. We're just going to let the uh, staff and you all have a nice vacation kind of time in Independence Day. 
I do hope you enjoyed this day. I do hope it meant a lot to you. I've always, I'm sorry, I come from a very patriotic line. We've always appreciated it. We've always been, uh, we always honored this time that was set aside. Uh, you do realize there's been a lot of bloodshed for us to have this country. Hallelujah. But there was blood shed for you to have heaven too. Isn't it amazing? Dad Hagen always says there is a parallel between heaven and earth. And it seems to run that way. And now we have some goodies for you. A nice little cupcake. And some refreshments, a little drink and whatever. And some fun things for you to participate in if you would like to before you return to your homes or wherever you might be. I bless you in the name of Jesus. I tell you, I am grateful for you. I am grateful for this church. And I am grateful for America. God bless you all. You're dismissed. And the altar is open. God bless you.